A lot of concerns about the US economy at the moment, uh, concerns about the weakness of growth and the slowdown in the world economy and how that's going to affect the US. But actually the data is pretty good. The labour market continues to improve and strengthen. Unemployment's been falling and demand is still quite strong. A lot of people are saying, well, the falling commodity prices and the rise in the dollar, that's going to upset the US recovery. But when we look at the falling commodity prices, we can see that it's mainly due to uh, an increase in supply rather than a, a fall in demand. If it was a fall in demand, we would be more worried because that would suggest that there's weakness coming along. But because it's due to increase in supply, we see it as a positive shock to the world economy. And as a result of that, inflation is coming in lower and people will find that they'll have more spending power in their pockets because inflation is lower and that will support consumer spending and growth further on. So we remain quite comf comfortable and confident about the US recovery. We believe it's on track and that recent developments are not going to derail that. The UK economy is still growing quite well. Um, the survey evidence is still reasonably firm. The housing market is still moving along, although it has slowed down a little bit. Inflation has been very low and surprised most economists on the downside. And against that backdrop, people have been pushing out interest rate increases in the UK. They now think they're more likely to occur after the election than before, for example. Our own view is that the economy probably will slow down a bit next year because of that election, because we think it's going to create quite a lot of uncertainty in uh, business people's minds, households' minds about spending, because taxes will probably change, and it's not clear exactly how they would change given the uncertainty about who's going to become elected. So we do see the U UK economy moderating a bit, but we think that may mean that interest rates rise later than currently expected. A lot of concerns about Eurozone growth at the moment. It seems as though the recovery that started about a year ago has now run out of steam and that the indicators suggest that growth is rolling over. And at the same time, inflation is still very low. They want Mario Draghi to do full-scale QE. Mario Draghi is playing a different game and I think he wants to spin it out a bit longer. He knows that he only has a certain amount of ammunition and he wants to see how his existing measures are going to work. So does that suggest we're very gloomy about the Eurozone? Well, not entirely, because we have seen a fall in the Euro already. And I think if there's continued talk about more QE, that could push the Euro weaker. And that will help Eurozone companies. It will help to reflate the economy. So we're probably a little bit more optimistic than many, although we don't think Eurozone growth is going to be anything to shout about next year. The emerging markets are still struggling to get a boost to their export growth. The rest of the world has not really provided enough demand to lift emerging markets out of their current malaise. It's a very mixed picture. Some of them are doing better. Some of them have got central banks that are very much on top of inflation, but others have still got inflation problems. Others have got political problems. And of course, economies like Russia are facing sanctions and a difficult period ahead politically. So it's still a very mixed picture. Financial markets have got quite concerned recently about a slowdown in global growth. They're also concerned about Fed ending QE, about the strength of the dollar, weakness of commodity prices. All these things have weighed on uh, the performance of financial markets, particularly equity markets. Our own view is slightly more positive. We do think that global growth will continue. It's not a strong forecast, but we think it'd be enough to push earnings up further. We also believe that equity markets are still reasonable value. They're not cheap but we don't think they're in expensive territory. And we also believe that the central banks are going to be quite supportive. We don't believe that the Fed will want to tighten aggressively and cause the US economy to stall. We think the ECB will do more in terms of liquidity provision. We think the Bank of Japan will do more. So more stimulus from the central banks. We also recognize that bond yields and cash yields are still very low and won't really deliver what investors need. So for that reason, we're focusing on equities and we're still very much focused on the US and Japan as the two markets that we prefer at the moment.